What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick modeling tutorial for you. So today we're going to go in and um, I'm actually going to model a bowl that I saw on another YouTuber's channel. Um, his name is Frank Howarth. Um, I'll link to his channel in the notes below, but I was fascinated just kind of by the shape that he created because he, cr he created like a walnut bowl, but half of it is kind of like segmented in with little wood pieces, and the other half is just a solid wood piece. So I wanted to come in here and just see if I could model that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to start off and we're going to draw a circle. And it's probably going to be about a 24-sided circle. It's probably going to have about a 6-inch radius in here. But what we're going to do now, once we've drawn our circle, is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw the profile of our bowl. So in this case, we'll say that this bowl is, we'll say it's 7 inches high. And all I'm doing here is I'm just drawing my canvas. Um, it's basically a face that I can come in here and I can draw the profile of my bowl on and I usually do that when I'm extruding things in a circle. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to kind of rough out the profile of the shape. So like if you were to come in here and just kind of draw a bowl just like this, we're just kind of drawing what the bowl shape would look like if uh, we kind of took a cut straight through the middle of it just like this and so I'm just going with a very simple shape right now I'm not doing anything complicated or anything like that it's just kind of a general bowl shape then all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete out that face right here because I think it affects what the bottom does but I'm gonna go ahead and delete out that face then I'm gonna select this circle I'm gonna activate the follow me tool and I'm gonna click on this face and you can see how what that did is that came in here and that extruded a bowl shape in a circle. And I can come in here and I can delete out the top just like this so that I have kind of my own bowl shape in here. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna turn on hidden geometry. So I'm gonna turn hidden geometry on by going up to view, hidden geometry. And then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out this circle right here, but I'm just going to draw a line you know what, I don't even know that I need to draw the line. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna select the hidden geometry of this line right here. And I got most of the other side too, which is great. Um, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this line along this face. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off soft. And when you turn off soft, what that means is instead of the lines being hidden, now they're in here as actual geometry. And we may change that later, but that means you can come in here and you can color each side of this individually, just like this. So these are two separate faces in here. So now once I've got that done, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna rough out my, uh, I'm gonna rough out my little uh, segments right here. So, and I'm actually going to fill this top back in because we're gonna use this center point. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna draw along the hidden geometry like this to create, if I turn hidden geometry off, I've got this little segment piece in here just like this. And then what I can do is I can come in here and I can use the rotate tool to make copies of that along this axis. So activate the, or select this face like this, activate the rotate tool, click on this center point, and then just tap the control key and you see when I tap the control key the plus came on and then I just click just like this that'll create a copy but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in X5 maybe X4 and hit the enter key no X5 and so basically what that did is that created four additional copies over here just like this along this arc so now I'm kind of breaking this up into its individual pieces. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn hidden geometry back on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same kind of thing. But since these little segment pieces kind of overlap, I'm going to fill this piece in right here. And then I'm going to draw another piece. Just like this. And so now if I come in here and I turn hidden geometry off, um, then I can come in here and I can do the same thing. And the nice thing about this is you can use inferencing to do this. So if I select this face, I can click on this top piece or I can click on this midpoint just like I did on the first one. And I can hit the control key and I can rotate this. And you can see how I can rotate that piece using the segments on the top here instead of having to come down here and click on the little pieces down here. So I can use that to really quickly come in and do this. And I'm just gonna type in times three on this one. Because remember, what we're having to do is we're having to fill in these little pieces on the edge here, just like this. 
but you can see how now I've got these in here and um, I've got my different segments in here just like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and I'm probably going to speed this piece up. Um, I'm just going to follow the same process all the way down this bolt. So now I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to kind of empty this out and you'll find that when you come in here and you do this, this probably added a whole bunch of circles in here. Just like this as you came in here and you drew this across, you can just select those and delete those out just like this. So now you've got your kind of bowl shape on the inside just like this and uh, granted there's no depth to this right now. You could probably use an extension like joint push pull or something like that in order to come in here and give that a little bit of depth if that's what you wanted to do. Alright so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're going to add it texture to this and so uh, we're gonna have to come in here and make a couple uh, little adjustments in order to do that because right now if you come in here and you uh, add your texture to this face just like this it's not gonna look very good you can see how I came in here I selected a wood veneer material and uh, really didn't like the way that that looked and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually gonna set this up, make a couple different adjustments to this but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the uh, the the texture up as a projected texture. And so what that means is instead of this coming in here, looking at the hidden geometry and then applying a piece of it to each face so it kind of looks tiled like this, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna draw uh, another kind of canvas on here. So we're just gonna draw basically along the green axis, or we're gonna draw a box out here off to the side just like this and we're going to apply the texture to it and then we're going to use that to kind of set our texture up to be kind of a projected texture. So all you're going to do is you're going to draw a face out here just like this then you're going to apply this wood veneer material to it. Well now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're going to make some adjustments. So first of all I'm going to come in here I'm going to select this material in the materials section of my toolbar and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to adjust this texture image size to six inches by six inches instead of uh, what it was before. So you can see what that did is that adjusted the size of this texture just like this. It also adjusted the way it looks on here, but you can see how it's still kind of tiling it on here and it doesn't look very good. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to come in here and we're going to right click on this texture that we put on this flat face. We're going to click position and then we're going to come in here. We're going to adjust it a little bit. So um, when I do this, I'm going to click and drag this little green option kind of 90 degrees this way because I want my wood grain running, running side to side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go down to texture and I'm going to click projected. And what projected is going to do is that's going to project this image onto this face just like this. So uh, what you do now, once you set this to projected, uh, click on this little eyedropper to reselect your material that's right here and then click on your face. And you can see how when I clicked on my face, it took that projected texture and it projects it along the curve of the bowl, just like this, so my texture looks a lot better. Uh, you still do get a little bit of, um, you're, you're still getting a little bit of distortion on the edge here, but I think it's really good enough for what we're trying to do. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna kind of work with our textures a little bit. Um, in order to do that, I'm gonna make a few different copies of this piece right here, because um, we're gonna have to use it um, we're going to have to create a couple different textures um, with some different colors and stuff like this. And this is some, this is an area where I think SketchUp struggles a little bit to kind of project things along faces and that kind of thing. I think it probably could be a little bit better, but um, we're going to go ahead and work with it as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a copy of this texture like this. So right now if I come in here and I select this, it's going to show up as whatever your wood veneer material was over here. Well, what we're going to do is uh, remember we've already got this kind of positioned and everything else so that it's projecting. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to right click on it, um, and I'm going to select this face and I'm going to click make unique texture. And when I select make unique texture and then I come back in here with the eyedropper and I select it, you can see how it renamed this material to wood veneer 01. And so what that means basically is now I can come in here and I can adjust the color with the color wheel of this texture just like this and you can see what that'll do is that'll adjust this and then I can come in here and this bowl has kind of some random different colors and stuff like that so I can just apply those colors randomly in here but it still retains some of this kind of like wood um, it's still got the wood 
texture in it. So the wood lines and stuff like that. So what I can do is I can come in here and I can make one of these unique over here and make it kind of an orange color. I can make another copy of this off to the side just like this. And then I can do the same thing. I make this a unique texture and then I select it so that I'm editing that texture and then I can adjust this to a different color, like kind of a blue color, just like this. And then I can take that and I can apply that to some of these different pieces in here as well. So you can see how by doing this, I can come in here and I can create that kind of like pieced in random color scheme that uh, was used um, in the original model that I'm basing this off of. So anyway, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to do that a few more times with a few different colors just to kind of just to kind of finish this thing off. So I'll probably speed this piece up as well. All right, so one last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assign these textures to the back side as well, and we're gonna use a little trick for this. And uh, so the way that's gonna work is you're just gonna come in here, you're gonna right click on your material, just like this, and you're gonna come down to the select option, and there's an option for all with same material. Because you can see what we didn't do is we didn't color the back side of this when we were in here and we're doing this. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, click select all with same material, we're gonna use the little eyedropper to click on a face just like this, and we're gonna click on the back side of the face, and you can see how now we've applied that material to both the front and the back side of each face. So you're just gonna come in here, you're gonna do that for each material that you have in your model. So select all the same material, click on one of those highlighted faces, and it'll color all of those in. So I'm just gonna come in here and do that with all these materials real quick. It should go really fast, actually. Um, so make sure you select the right material, apply it to the back side, and you're done. So now what you've got here is you've got a bowl that's uh, showing pieced in pieces on this side, and um, it's got all the different colors and everything else in here. So, so in the next video, I'm going to come in and I'm going to show you how to use a joint push pull to give this some depth, as well as use another extension to kind of smooth out your edges so that we can have kind of a nice image for um, rendering or whatever you want to do with it. So uh, make sure you turn it, tune into that next video as well. So that's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, did you know you could do stuff like this? Are you working with hidden geometry? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's going to have everything from the link to my Patreon page to some extensions you can purchase that'll help support the show. Um, that just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.